Hey gang, I'm Luke and welcome to Down From The Attic. One of the worst things that can happen to any board game whilst you're playing it is for a player to spill their drink all over it. Cards will get ruined, the board will get warped, and water is something that you generally want nowhere near any board game. Well, usually. But today guys, I'm showing you a rare exception, a game that actually needs water for it to work. Today, we're looking at Splish Splash from Peter Pan Games, a game that actually uses water to power the trap. Let's dive in and let's have a look at this thing. First off, box art, and well, it's just a simple photo of the game. Pretty standard fare, really. I had a copy of this game when I was a kid that I picked up from a boot sale. It was missing parts, and mostly I used it for dunking Lego men into. Splish Splash is one of those games that, for the longest time, I had no idea what it was called. I just had this vague memory of it. Uh, the duck game, the, the, the water game, a splashing game. I had no idea. I had to really delve deep into the internet and find a copy of this again. Contents. And this had a ton of plastic pieces to it. A ton. And considering there's water involved, it's hardly a surprise. They're not going to use cardboard here. So, what is there? There's the base, this zigzag frame, the roof, the water tank, two drain pipes, this bathtub, the boy, two marbles, this floor, this old man with a fishing rod, a large funnel with two holes, four cups, this chicken stopper, this water wheel and cradle, eight ducks, the dice, and a literal kitchen sink. Setting this thing up is a bit of a faff, I'll be completely honest, but here we go. Put the zigzag in the base, fit the drain pipes around the zigzag, attach the boy in the bath and fit the bath to the side. Fit the roof and the tank in the top and fit the chicken stopper in the hole in the tank. Fit all four cups around the board. The floor fits into this slot here, fit the sink and the man with the fishing rod in place. Carefully put a marble here behind the bathtub kid's baseball glove and another here underneath the chicken. Fit the water wheel holder and the water wheel in place and the PS store resistance. Fill the tank with water and we're done. And assembled, it's pretty impressive. This is a tall game and demands attention when you bring it to the table. So playing the game, and this really is quite a simple game. You have two ducks and you have to safely navigate them around the board at the bottom of the house and back to base, one full loop around the house for each duck. First to do that, wins. However, dotted on the board are splish and splash squares with a number of move to splish or move to splash or move to splish or splash squares. This game works an awful lot like the end of Mousetrap where someone needs to be on the crank space and someone needs to be under the cage in order to operate the trap. But unlike Mousetrap, the chances of this happening is greatly increased with the move to splish and move to splash squares. Splish squares are the buckets, splash squares are in the corners, and if someone has their duck on the bucket and you land in a corner, you get to set the mechanism going. Pull the chicken stopper out of the tank and the water will begin to run down the roof, into the gutter. The water will fall through the gutter and begin to fill the bathtub. As the bathtub fills, it raises the boy up and sets the marble running along the drain pipe, hitting the chicken and setting that marble running down the zigzag. The water falls through the bath plug, activating the water wheel and begins to fill the sink. Meanwhile, the ball bearing in the zigzag is moving closer and closer to the old man. The marble in the drain pipe falls into the funnel and lands on one of these two holes. The zigzag marble lands on the old man, he leans back on his rocking chair, pulling out the plug in the sink. The water runs down the drain pipe, into the funnel and begins to fill the buckets. As the buckets fill, the weight of the water tips the duck into the bucket and splish splash, you have to go all the way back to the start. The water from the buckets is then dumped back into the water tank in the top, ready to be set off again. What's clever about this mechanism is that the marble in the drain pipe blocks off two routes to two of the buckets. It will only ever activate two buckets so you can get lucky and avoid being dunked. For a simple game, it's actually a lot of fun to send your friends into the drink with the mechanism and it's satisfying to see this thing working when it works correctly. Yes, just like Mousetrap, this can go wrong sometimes. The zigzag marble may roll off and not activate the old man, so the sink just keeps filling and filling. The drain pipe marble may not perfectly block one hole, and all four cups will fill partially, but not enough to tip the ducks into them. Mm -hmm. 
and water will definitely end up on the table. The slopes to the buckets on the board are the root cause of this. They're just not angled deep enough to keep the water flowing constantly and sometimes water will just sit there until the slightest nudge will send water dripping onto the table. You'll definitely need a towel whilst playing this. And the other thing too is that the marbles are very precariously balanced and a few times in the game you'll set them rolling without having the water running. It's a bit of a pain but it can be easily reset. And another thing is that when you put this game away you'll need to carefully dry all the pieces. It's the price you pay for a game that involves water. My friends have suggested playing this with vodka where if your duck gets dunked you down the bucket full of vodka but I can see this getting really messy. Not just with how much you're drinking, but how much vodka would be all over the table. Splish Splash isn't one of the best games in my collection, I'll be completely honest with you there, but it's certainly one of the more unique ones. It's amazing to me to think that someone thought to use water to power all these mechanics here, and when it does work, it's pretty fantastic to watch. But copies of this aren't easy to find complete, and when you do, expect water damage on the box. It's just part and parcel of having a game that uses water, it's going to happen. Um, but if you are interested in unique mechanics, Splish Splash is definitely worth checking out. Well, as always, I'm Luke, thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.